Hi friends, it's Pastor Tim Henderson and I've got my adorable grandson Peter. Can you say hi Peter? Hi. And I've got Ezekiel right there. I don't know if you can see him if I got that too close, but uh, we're hanging out here. Oh, sorry, Seek. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? There you are. There's Ezekiel. And Peter, you want to say hi again? Hi. So, what an interesting morning. My car, um, my daughter and my two adorable grandsons came to the rescue, so my car is getting fixed. You know, these things will happen. But I did want to, and Peter, we were praying, right, Peter? Right. Can you pray for everyone? Can you pray and say, ask Jesus to bless them? Amen. Amen. Good job. And so we were praying, and I wanted to give an update on uh, some of the current events going on in the world. And obviously, do you feel it in your spirit? Do you sense and feel the coming of the Lord? Like, you're being drawn to it, right? It's just, wow, what an amazing thing. In fact, my car had broken down, just a random thing, angel light goes on, and after I get it, while I'm waiting for my daughter to, um, the dealer that I deal with, after I, after I get it there, hold on baby, I'll, I'll help you in a minute. After I get it there, I get a call from a dear sister in the Lord who said that the Holy Spirit just impressed on her to, to you know, stop doing what she was doing and pray for me. And then even after she prayed, she was so impressed, she had to pick up the phone to call me and let me know. She knew nothing about my day. And it was just, what a powerful prayer and, and what a blessing it was. How much God loves us that, that he'll call on intercessors, the Holy Spirit will, to intervene on our behalf. We serve just an awesome God who loves us fiercely and passionately. And so we are in the final moments of the end of days. I want to tell you a couple things that are going on. One, in the past few days, the UN, of course the UN, you know, this is the, this, the UN is the foundation of the one world government. You do know that, right? <clears throat> so the UN has new international immigration or migration policies, and they have it under different terms. But basically, what has come out is that some of the European nations, the EU, people who speak negatively in the near future about the UN's international immigration policy or migration policies could be held for crimes. Yep, that's what I said. And you know what? To think that in the U.S. or other countries that that couldn't happen, listen, if you don't agree with this world agenda and the sinful ideology, you're considered a hater. It's just a matter of time before hate crimes increase. And there's so many things we could talk about that has even happened in the U.S. and, of course, around the world. So we know that that is significant. Boy, things, you know, the the people chipped in Sweden and the microchip all over the world that we've been talking about. Those kind of things are are serious. They're they're pointing toward the system of Antichrist, and the foundation is already upon us. Now, I want to talk about something else. When we look at countries like Saudi Arabia and Egypt, they would be considered. Now, they're Sunni. They're Sunni Mus Sunni Muslims. They're a Shiite, and they're Sunni Mus Muslims. But even within those sects of Islam. There are differences and variations just like there are in Christendom or, or Judaism or, or really any major world religion. And so I'd say the, I see different statistics. Clearly, 80% to 85% of the Muslim population in the world is Sunni Muslims. But there is, there's a movement afoot, and there has been, that people like the crown prince of Saudi Arabia and the president of Egypt, they're Muslim, they're Sunni Muslims, but they're moderate Muslims. In a speech just within the past few days, the president of Egypt basically called out the radical Muslims. And, and I'm, I'm going to give you, you know, the bottom line of it. Basically, he's saying to the Muslim world, they inaccurately interpret the Muslim holy scriptures, what they consider their holy scriptures. And so they are against radical Islam. Well, why? Why do you have countries like Saudi Arabia and Egypt who, by the way, want to work with the Trump administration, 
are working now as allies with Israel, meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan. These countries are wanting to cooperate and, and talking about peace. That's exactly what's happening. Now it's going to be a false peace, but they're working to work peace. And, and so the, the religious world and the world is already moving toward peace. I mean, this has great prophetic implication and significance because we know. So let's put the timing in events. Listen, I believe that Ezekiel's war could break out at any time. I actually believe that Isaiah 17 may very well be the trigger when Damascus ends up in complete ruins. And for the record, these things could happen at any moment. The countries of Iran, Turkey, Russia, I've been saying this, Rosh, Togarmonki, Persia, that was their ancient names, Kush and Put, with the influence of these countries in the north, with the influence and support of Libya and Sudan from the south, the countries that Ezekiel named in Ezekiel 38 are in place to come against Israel, and God is going to miraculously defend Israel herself. I believe a potential scenario is that those countries that are coming into alliance are, are going to say, now remember, no one is going to defend Israel but God himself, God himself with, supernaturally. And that has all, many of its own implications. We know those things are going to happen. And wouldn't that just set the stage, the things that are happening? Think about it. When, when Russia and why, look at the gas prices, the oil prices, the oil prices, how they're dropping for Iran, for for Russia, the, the line, the pipeline that's going to go from Israel to Europe that's going to impact Russia and, um, and Norway, who now supply. I, when you look at all of those things, it lines up perfectly. People are suffering in Iran. The people of Iran, I pray for them because their government continues to take the money that's available and sponsor terrorism. And, and so you've got all these things that are happening that are setting the stage. The stage is set. It's not setting. It's set. It's set. The same way I believe that the banquet hall, the tables are set for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Listen, we are so close. When Ezekiel's war happens and God delivers Israel, that is going to be a statement to the world. And I believe it's just going to set the stage for the Antichrist to come in and confirm the peace plan. We talk about Daniel 9, 27. And that's going to be for a three and a half year period. And then we know, we know that it's not real. We know that pretty much then, basically, there's going to be great tribulation like the world has never known. What I'm saying is, it, it's not coincidence that what the prophet said 2,500 years ago is at, it, it's at hand. Brothers and sisters, it's at hand. Jesus is coming very, I get so excited when I think about it. Now, we must occupy and redeem the time. But can you not see? So you've got the Sunnis within their own sect of Islam are, there's a division against radical Islam. Why? Because they're going to work with figures like Pope Francis. I, I think we could be looking at the false prophet right there. Now, I, I'm not declaring that because I don't know, but I really, man, the signs point to it. This man calls himself the Holy Father. He is not our Father in heaven. However, he is a man who has been working closely with Islam. He calls it the religion of peace. He inaugurated a Palestinian embassy at Vatican City. All the signs are there. He's, he wants to do this ecumenical movement. That's, that's at foot. It's, it's now going on. That we all come together. This thought that we all serve the same God just under different names. No, we do not. I've already done videos on that. We do not. What Jesus do you believe in? I mean, that's what it really comes down to, right? Do you believe in the Christ, Jesus, the Christ, the appointed one? 
Yeshua HaMashiach? Do you believe in Jesus Messiah? Do you believe he is part of the Godhead, the Trinity, the eternally self-existing God and the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? In other words, do you believe in the actual divinity, the deity of Jesus Christ? See, there are other religions that don't. We know Jehovah's Witnesses don't. We know that LDS don't. We know that the Muslims believe in Jesus, but they do not believe in the Jesus we serve and believe in, that he's Messiah. They believe he was a prophet. Yes, baby, what? Okay, we'll get out. Just give me a minute, okay? She'll be right back. I'm going to say goodbye to our friends, okay? So we've got the one word. They're important to me. Thank you for being patient. We've got the one world religion that is being formed, and it's going to include. I For years I've been calling it Chislam. I don't know what name they'll put to it, but it is a culmination of that ecumenical movement. And so these moderate Muslims are saying, you know, they're coming against the radical Muslims, and they're really paving the way as part of this one world religion, um, and also the one world government where they're going to declare peace. And so we know that that's a false peace for a period of time, and then we know what happens. But brothers and sisters, I am so excited. So when you have things like the UN stepping in, and literal groups of countries saying, yes, we agree with this, and if a citizen doesn't agree with this, guess what? They're a criminal. Boy, are we living in times like the Bible says we are. I am so excited, and I want to encourage you. I want you to know your bridegroom is coming. Don't you lose hope. I know you're under attack. I know it. I know it, and I pray for you. Please know, I, I pray for my family, my church family, and this family that's following. I am so encouraged by many of my brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, don't you lose hope, and don't you give up. Now, we need to pray. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to be in the Word. We need to encourage one another, and we need to reach out to a lost and dying world. Remember, Jesus loves them. He died for them the same way he died for us, and so we have to have his heart for people. Well, I just wanted to get on here and tell you some of the what's going on, this this actual, this in-battling, not even just between the Shiites and the Sunnis, but among the Sunnis. That's why this um, reporter that was cut up into pieces. I, I've been saying this from the pulpit. I've been saying it on here. They've been doing this in the Middle East for centuries. Not that I don't care that someone's murdered. This man was an ISIS supporter. He was against the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He was killed in the Saudi embassy in Turkey. And the liberal, in our country, in the United States of America alone, the fake news, the liberal media, man, they're pounding on this, pounding. Why is President Trump not holding him accountable? There's a spirit behind that. And that spirit does not want this alliance that's going on. But God is sovereign, brothers and sisters. And the things that his word says were going to happen, have happened, are happening, and are happening right now. He's coming soon. Our bridegroom is coming. Praise God. Love you. Jesus loves you. Have an awesome day.